Good evening. So I am here to talk about one of humankind's most discussed yet controversial subjects in our social world. Love Island! <laughs> no, my talk is on crime and ethics, which are often considered controversial because of their attempt to apply changing morality to behaviours that impact or th threaten others' lives. This feeling of threat is perhaps justified if our current understanding of criminality is believed, that the worst atrocities are committed by criminals such as murderers, gang leaders, or heads of state who should be tried for war crimes. <laughs> However, I am not here tonight to talk about those extremes of arguably evil acts. I am here tonight to talk about what happens to those for whom crime is barely a choice. Where is their image in our heads? Why do we not think of those who made poor errors of judgment? Very often because they didn't realize that they had another choice or simply knew only one way of acting and reacting to life, desperation. We tend to see the horror thanks to news stories. Here then are two real stories. Carly, a university graduate with dyslexia who was told she wasn't good enough to study psychology by school teachers, yet worked hard and got into university, where she failed two years and began struggling with self-belief, and would have probably dropped out if it hadn't been for an encouraging and supportive stranger, who told Carly she would make a great therapist one day. Yet, even with her degree, Carly felt ashamed that she wasn't close to making this dream happen. One day, whilst unemployed, and after a bad breakup, Carly took the chance to sell cannabis and ecstasy at a music festival in a desperate act to make her dream real. A short time after this, Carly was arrested and at another festival where after a guilty plea, she was sentenced to 38 months for possession with intent to supply class A and B substances. Or what about Justin, who came from a poverty-stricken family? Poor school results meant he, he believed his best solution for life was to sign up to the military. Over the years, Justin witnessed his friends die around him. Because Justin grieved openly, he was considered weak, became marginalized, then bullied, and finally raped on multiple occasions by three unnamed army officers. Justin never pressed charges. He left the military and returned to civilian life without telling anyone why. He had no mental health support, no help with rehabilitation. His trauma haunted him, and he became an alcoholic to cope. Despite his anxiety, he summoned the courage to go to the pub to try and socialize, where a man sat on a bar stool, stared at him. Suddenly, a glass was accidentally dropped, smashing on the pub floor, triggering Justin into a flashback of glass being held at his throat. Reacting from this state of post-traumatic stress, Justin hit the man who fell off the stool onto the broken glass and sliced his neck. Justin had no recollection of the event happening or being arrested and found himself in a police cell, was remanded to prison, and after a guilty plea, was sentenced to 28 months for inflicting GBH. These are painfully true stories. Both are victims of their past. Public Health Wales recognizes trauma as almost any event that has a lasting negative effect on your mental well-being. It can be as small as being berated at school to suffering abuse or neglect. Both Carly and Justin's stories begin with some form of trauma. The trauma changes the way we behave. If trauma isn't addressed through support, then trauma-based actions, such as antisocial behaviors, will either perpetuate or increase and can trigger others. Therefore, anything that adds trauma to avoidable criminal behavior will dramatically increase the chances of them reoffending. Trauma, such as imprisonment. UK prisons are ineffective at preventing re-offense, instead strengthening the cycle of crime, particularly privatized prisons where a profit is made on people's suffering. Scandinavian countries rehabilitate instead of punish prisoners. Their crime rates have dropped dramatically. We have to demand this. Yet, I come from a stable and loving family have an excellent degree, worked numerous jobs, have great friends and paid my taxes, yet I ended up in prison. Carly's story is mine. In prison, I attended the Chase program. I now draw portraits and mentor at the Include Hub in Swansea. 
I'm working on a book called Outside In. I've not given up on my dream. Justin is my friend who opened up with me about his trauma. He helped inspire me and believe in myself and finish my degree. Sadly, Justin passed away recently from an overdose. My presentation tonight was changed to honor his life. Just remember that anyone can end up in prison because criminals are people too. Thank you.